Hi everybody, it's Jima Malmi. Thanks for joining me for another scrapbook process video. I had so much fun designing my Cricut layout last month that I decided to do another one. This time I'll be doing a 12 by 12 layout and I'm gonna show you the process of how I do it in Design Space. I'm in a blank canvas in Cricut Design Space and I'm going to go over to images and then search by image sets and filter it by purchase because I know that the collection I wanna use is the new Love Each Day from Close to My Heart. So when you open that collection, you see all these projects. There's six by eight, there's eight and a half by 11, 12 by 12 and card projects. But I'm gonna show you how to resize something to a 12 by 12. So I'm selecting this one here and I'm gonna be changing the colors and I'm going to be changing it to a 12 by 12. So first thing I'm gonna do is ungroup everything. It comes onto the canvas grouped together, but I wanna ungroup it and first just resize that background. And then I'm gonna sort of um, group things together, like group the two pieces for the follow your heart because I wanna resize those together and the photo mat and then the all of these kind of uh, triangular layers. I'm going to delete that background piece just to kind of make it easier to select all of these at once. And first I'm going to unlock it to keep the so that I don't have to keep those proportions. And I'm just going to change the height to 12 inches because I wanted to see how much that would skew. It skewed a little bit too much. So then I went back, I'm going to group it together to make it easier. And I'm going to keep the proportions this time and change the height to 12 inches. So now we've got the right proportions as the original so those hearts and other pieces aren't skewed. But I'm going to kind of play with that again later on. So I'm just going to resize everything. I'm changing the photo mat to fit 4 by 6s And I'm going to duplicate that because I'm going to have two photos on my layout. Now that I have everything in place, I'm going to come over to all these pieces over on the left. I'm looking at these border pieces and realize there's four pieces and it takes up that kind of, it's almost an inch over on the left. So I am going to move all of those kind of triangular pieces over and squish it just a little bit. I want it to be um, a little bit narrower, but not warp those circles too much. And you can't tell too much right here, and I'm liking where those are. And then those border pieces, kind of putting them over the triangles so that less of the triangles are showing. And I'm liking how that's looking. And so then I'm gonna go into recoloring all of my pieces. As I'm recoloring these, I'm choosing colors that are in the shirts in the photos that I'm gonna use. I actually had no idea which paper pack I was gonna use when I started this. I ended up going in a completely different direction once I started putting the layout together, but I saw these colors on the screen and I thought, oh my gosh, this is some of the same colors as in the new Fresh Paint collection. So I was so pleasantly surprised with how well it worked out to use the Fresh Fresh Paint collection because at first look, when you look at that collection, it looks way different than you think it's going to. I also thought I was going to keep this layout very simple and just keep to the Cricut cuts, but as you'll see, I ended up adding stamped images and stickers and changing the title and all that. So it's just interesting to see how different a layout can go. So here are all of my pieces cut. These are full 12 inch strips and so I didn't line them up perfectly. They got a little bit cut off at the bottom. So I think what I'm gonna do is add a quarter inch border around the page that will solve that problem. So I arranged my photos on here thinking I wanted this one on the bottom because since it's more zoomed in, it has more visual weight. But this little embellishment here is gonna cover up too much of me on the photo. So I'm gonna go ahead and swap them and that is going to end up being just fine. And now this doesn't cover up anything important. So the papers that I decided to use are, um, this one is from my stash for the red. I thought it would be fun to bring in some patterns, but these other two patterns are from the new Fresh Paint collection from Close to My Heart. And if you look at this, it looks very um, loud and colorful and teenagery. And uh, when you look at these papers more individually, um, they really can go in so many different directions. So I've pulled this kind of dripping paint pattern and this sort of spray paint looking pattern from the kit to work for my yellow and my blue. So I thought I would just give you a quick look at the kit. So there's two of each pattern 
So this one that I used is uh, this is the both sides of this paper, and so I've got one pattern left of that. This one that looks like the popular shoe pattern has this on the other side, and then this fun graffiti heart looking paper has the spray paint look on the back. So it is very loud, but I'm really excited. I'm loving this kit and you guys probably know I love bright colors. So I'm gonna show you lots of ways to use that over the next couple months. So I'm using those for this layout today. And then for my background, I thought it would be fun to add a little bit of pattern as well, but just a subtle pattern. So I pulled out this noteworthy collection this is just a smaller collection that has kind of like note paper and note kind of backgrounds on it. And any number of these would have worked. I, the notebook paper would be cute, but for these photos, I thought it didn't quite fit. These little, it's hard to see, these are little dots. That would look cute too. But I actually decided to go with this graph paper because it sort of ties in with the brick look in the background. Another reason I chose that graph paper is because it was printed in gray, which tied in with some of the other elements on my layout. So I've got my background piece. I gutted out that Capri cardstock so I wouldn't waste any. And then I'm using my handy dandy Versamat to help me line everything up. I'm adhering these two border strips together and you may have noticed when I was in Cricut Design Space, I deleted two of the border strips and I just kept these two. There were originally four layers and since they didn't span the whole 12 inches, I'm just trimming them down so that they fit on that note paper and that is perfect. So I'm get, gonna get all of these pieces adhered together. I haven't trimmed those triangle ones yet, but once I put this border piece on, I'm centering it up and down, and then I will take the whole thing to my uh, paper trimmer and trim it off to size. Now I've got some Capri um, Shimmer Brush here. This is a brand new brush that I haven't opened yet. You need to remove that yellow ring when you get yours and then kind of squeeze it out until it starts flowing. I love these shimmer brushes and if you watch my channel, you know that. <laughs> I love adding shimmer splatters with these shimmer brushes. Of course, they can do so much more than that, but the splatters are gonna be perfect on this layout and I think that the Capri splatters are gonna look really good to tie in with the paint theme of this paper and sort of make it look like paint splatters. And then like I mentioned, I ended up taking this layout in a completely different direction than I originally thought. So I got this all together. I think it looked great. You could definitely just leave it as is with the Cricut cuts, but I wanted to add a little bit more. And so I pulled out this stamp set that goes with the Fresh Paint collection. And I'm gonna do some fun stamping techniques with this. So first I got grabbed this one that looks like dripping paint. And I thought it would be fun to have that come out from underneath my embellishments in my photo. The first thing I did since I haven't used this set yet, it's brand new, is I kind of uh, rubbed it on my hand to season it. And that helps get any manufacturing gunk off and just kind of get it ready, get the oils on your hands on it, get it ready to accept the ink better. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is turn my Versamat over, which has a foamy surface, and that will help give it a little bit of extra give to make sure you get a really good stamped impression. And this comes in handy when you're stamping directly onto your page like I'm going to here. I also stamped it off onto my scrap paper there just to kind of test it and get a few um, stamps under my belt to uh, further season my stamp. And when I did that, that also helped me see the color that was gonna come off. And I didn't want the full bright color of the Capri ink. And so I decided to do second generation stamping. So I stamped it the first time off onto my scrap paper and then without re-inking, I stamped it onto my page. So it's got that lighter color. I decided I wanted a little more drip, but I didn't want it to look exactly the same as that first drip. So I'm gonna do some masking with this stamp, with this scrap paper. So I'm going to kind of 
figure out where I want that paint to be. I want it just a little bit higher than the other one and I don't want those two longer drips over on the left. So I'm using my scrap paper to mask that off. It's got a little bit of a harsh edge at the top of that stamp, but that's gonna be covered up with the photo so it doesn't matter. And I think that that looks really fun having that paint dripping down from the photo. So then I was looking at this stamp set and I thought, hmm, what else can I use? A lot of these stamps are going to look really good with this layout now that I'm kind of going in this new direction. It's giving me a whole lease on the layout. Um, those ones, those shapes on the right all have uh, thin cuts, dies. So I was keeping that in mind. So I got my little six by six piece of paper and I thought that these stamps lended themselves really well for rock and roll stamping. So you wanna stamp in your lighter ink first and then I just rolled the stamp, the outsides of that stamp around the edges in the candy apple, the darker color ink. And so that gave it that really cool two tone look. I'm cleaning my stamp uh, between each inking with my stamp chamois. I keep my stamp chamois in that little salt container. It works out really well. And I really was liking how this was looking. So I just kept going and I was trying different color combos. So this one was the yellow rocked in nectarine. So I'm using all the ink pads that coordinate with this paper collection and with the um, specifically the colors I used from this paper collection. So I decided to do it more with the heart and some of the other stars. And so these are all the pieces that I have and I'm going to use on my layout. Then I thought, well, this paper collection, this whole collection is working so well for my layout. What else can I pull out? So I brought out these pocket cards and this, these also coordinate with this collection and seeing which ones I might be able to use. That pizza slice on that one card jogged my memory that, hey, we had pizza at this um, farewell party that these pictures are from so I thought that might be kind of fun and then there were these pocket cards that had titles that I thought might work and I ended up not using any of them I was thinking I might cut them out with this die right here and use it as a title but I didn't want to introduce green uh, to this layout I didn't have any green anywhere and I just was trying to stay away from any of the stickers or embellishments that did so so then I pulled out the sticker sheet by this point, I had decided that I'm gonna completely remove the title I printed on my Cricut, and I'm going this whole new direction with the sticker sheet. And so I'm just pulling out these stickers and I'm putting them on my anti-static pouch to remove the stick on the back so I can move them around my page uh, without them sticking. This little bubble piece has some journaling lines, so I thought that might be good for my journaling. I just had a little bit of journaling to do. And then there's that same pizza that was on the pocket card, but in the sticker. So I'm trying to move that around and figure out where that's gonna go. And um, actually I do have that original title back in. It was after this that I realized I wanna um, use something different because I thought that pizza would be fun kind of tucked behind the title or tucked down there by the title, but it just wasn't fitting with that. So there we go, I toss it up and I thought, okay, I'm gonna use some stickers. So this happy here, um, worked well but I didn't want that pink piece so I thought well can I cover it with some other stickers and I did and it looked nice and then I'm going to start bringing in all of these stamped pieces that I created as well some of them I'm going to tuck behind the photo and tuck behind clusters and just vary where I have things my embellishment clusters are going to change locations as I get going so you'll see how that all plays out I wanted to make sure I had a visual triangle and right now is sort of a diagonal and I'm not liking it so that top right cluster is going to end up moving but I'm really liking how all of these stamped pieces are working well with the stickers and then I'm going to pull in some acrylic shapes later as well it's just all turning out so much more fun than I expected. It's taking longer than I expected because I thought it was going to be just a real simple layout of adhering all the pieces that I had cut and originally designed in Design Space. But um, you know me, I love playing with all of my embellishments and so this ended up being more fun. It just took a little bit longer, <laughs> but I'm um, really happy with how it turned out. As you can see, I'm not including any green. I still was able to just keep it to the warmer colors plus the capri and just pull the pieces from the sticker sheet that worked with my layout. 
Now these acrylic shapes are also part of the fresh paint collection and so I pulled in some of those. There's some hearts and stars and happy faces and diamonds and fire and there's all kinds of fun shapes here. The blue in the acrylic didn't quite match the capri exactly so I decided not to pull in any of the blue but I pulled in a few of the red and the white. I fussed with these for quite some time, so I'm going to spare that for you and cut to the details in just a moment. I hope that this video inspired you in some way, and if it did, please give it a like so YouTube knows to share it to more people. And if you haven't already, then please subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any upcoming scrapbooking videos. Thanks for watching and have a great day!